so hello welcome guys so today in this class you'll going to learn about the differences between typical antipsychotics and atypical antipsychotics so before going to the drugs in detail we'll know briefly about what is schizophrenia you all know that schizophrenia is a severe psychiatric illness and it is thought to be due to dopaminergic overactivity so it is mainly due to the dopaminergic overactivity in the limbic system of brain so the other neurotransmitters like serotonin and noradrenaline also probably play a role in this disorders so all the drugs for schizophrenia have equal efficacy this mainly differs in potency so they may be equally efficacy but differs in their potency and be classified into typical antipsychotic and atypical antipsychotics so the typical antipsychotics mainly acts by blocking the dopamine d2 receptors while the atypical antipsychotics they have weak d2 blocking activity so basically this dopamine hypothesis helps in knowing the why schizophrenia occurs so schizophrenia states that these are the symptoms which will be arising due to the excessive dopaminergic activity so in the mesolimbic system so dopamine agonist will going to cause psychosis and dopamine antagonist will going to cause antipsychotic action so coming to the differences between a atypic typical and the atypical antipsychotics so the examples under typical antipsychotics are chlorpromazine thioridazine flufenazine haloperidol whereas under atypical antipsychotics you have clozapine risperidone quetiapine arapiprazole and ziprazidone next coming to the mechanism of action how this typical and atypical antipsychotics will differ in their mechanism of action so typical antipsychotics will going to block the dopamine receptor so they are the dopamine receptor blocker specifically they block the d2 receptor so they are strong d2 receptor antagonists they have high affinity towards the d2 receptor they tightly binds to the d2 receptor and blocks the d2 action so they have, they have high potency high potency towards the d2 receptors so coming to the atypical antipsychotics these atypical antipsychotics in addition to blocking the d2 receptors the, you should remember that the antagonism of d2 receptors caused by atypical is very weak they loosely bound to binds to the d2 receptors so they have a low potency towards the d2 receptors in addition to d2 weak antagonism they also antagonizes the serotonin receptor that is 5ht2 receptor and histamine receptor so coming to the typical so other differences are these typical antipsychotics they are used for better at treating positive symptoms than the negative symptoms so positive symptoms so in schizophrenia you have negative as well as positive symptoms so positive symptoms example delusion and hallucinations are well treated by the atypical antipsychotics whereas atypical antipsychotics they are better at treating the negative symptoms they also treat the positive symptoms 
but when compared to the relief obtained from the negative symptoms are better than the positive ones so negative symptoms includes loss of normal functions and feeling loss of interest in things the person will not be able to experience pleasure so the person will experience apathy anhedonia and cognitive blur. so coming to the differences with respect to typical and the atypical antipsychotic with respect to their side effects so typical antipsychotics can cause extra pyramidal symptoms so you have to remember that typical antipsychotic the most commonly produce side effects is extra pyramidal symptoms due to the dopamine blockade in the limbic system so what are this extra pyramidal symptoms so the patient can have acute muscular dystonia parkinsonism akathisia malignant neuroleptic syndrome tardive dyskinesia etc so the most earliest side effect to appear is the acute muscular dystonia where the patient will manifest in terms of torticollis locked jaw achilogyric crisis as well as the spasm of other muscles so what is the treatment for acute muscular dystonia it is central anticholinergic why central anticholinergic you know that these extra pyramidal symptoms are mainly due to the cholinergic overactivity you know that what is the association or relationship between the dopamine and the cholinergic system so this dopamine will inhibit the cholinergic activity by inhibiting the cholinergic acetylcholine release so when you give a typical antipsychotics you know that typical antipsychotic acts through blocking the d2 receptor so this d2 receptor which is present on the dendrites of the cholinergic neuron when you give a typical antipsychotic it is going to block the d2 activity on the cholinergic neurons thereby it overcomes the cholinergic inhibition so cholinergic activity will increase so there will be over activity of the over functioning of the cholinergic actions so to overcome this you have to give the central anticholinergic drugs so next is the parkinsonism it usually appears one to four weeks after the therapy again here you can overcome this by giving central anticholinergic like benzexol the drug of choice for drug induced parkinsonism next is the akathisia so it is an irresistible desire to move about in the absence of anxiety so it is the most common extra pyramidal symptoms so propranolol is the preferred drug for this condition however you can use the central anticholinergic drugs also and others side effect which comes under the extra pyramidal symptoms are malignant neuroleptic syndrome so it usually presents as hyperthermia extreme generalized rigidity autonomic instability altered mental status it can be treated by giving parenteral intravenous dantrolin or bromocriptin so coming to the tardive dyskinesia it is the last one to appear it occurs late in therapy it is mainly characterized by purposeless involuntary movements like chewing or puffing of cheeks it is assumed that it occurs mainly due to the super sensitivity of dopamine receptors so in the long term when you give a antipsychotic for long duration of time there will be development of tolerance so what does this tolerance do so there will be increase in the receptor number thereby it increases the super sensitivity of the dopamine receptors so therefore 
central anticholinergics are contraindicated here. So there are recent advances for treating tardive dyskinesia by using vesiculomonoaminotransporter 2 inhibitor that is VM82 inhibitors. Example is well benazin. So next you the typical ones can cause uh, apart from blocking the D2 receptor they also block the cholinergic activity they can cause anticholinergic side effect like dry mouth they can cause constipation they can cause drowsiness they can cause blurred vision so why sedation occurs is mainly due to it also blocks the H1 histamine receptors why postural hypotension again postural hypotension is mainly due to the blockade of alpha 1 receptors so typical ones when you see the typical atypical uh, antipsychotics they do not show any extra pyramidal symptoms or they show lesser degree of extra pyramidal symptoms because they are weak d2 antagonists they have lower affinity towards the d2 receptors so they act by other mechanism mainly through the by blocking the serotonin apart from blocking serotonin they also block cholinergic so they can also show anticholinergic side effect so some of the drugs will have metabolic side effects so they can lead to increase in the sugar levels they can precipitate diabetes they can lead to hyperlipidemia etc so and also there will be eating disorder it can cause weight gain again sedation is due to blocking of h1 receptors and postural hypotension is also due to the blocking of alpha 1 adrenergic receptors so what are the uses of uh, antipsychotics in general they are used for treatment of schizophrenia schizoaffective states bipolar disorders tor tourette syndrome that is tics tics disorders huntings tongue disease drug or radiation emesis some of the antipsychotics have very strong anti-emetic action so that action can be made utilized for treating drug or radiation indication. So adverse effects already as I described. So adverse effects which are mainly due to the dopamine blockade or dyskinesia that is extra pyramidal symptoms. So which one will appear first? So the earliest extra pyramidal symptoms are also called as acute extra pyramidal symptoms they are pseudo parkinsonism dystonia akathisia how do you treat it by treating by giving anti muscarinic drugs especially the centrally acting anticholinergic like pens tropin also you can give typhen adramen so coming to the chronic uh, extra pyramidal symptoms or the extra pyramidal symptoms which appear uh, in the later stages that is tardive dyskinesia so it can be managed by stopping the uh, typical antipsychotics and you can switch over to the atypical ones and it can also cause and other uh, adverse effects which are due to dopamine blockade or they can also lead to endocrine dysfunction like it can cause neuroleptic malignant syndrome uh, which can be treated by giving parenteral dantrolin as well as the promocryptin and also since uh, this typical ones will block the T2 receptor there will be increase in the prolactin release which can lead to galactoria, amenorrhea and gynecomastia and also especially the uh, antipsychotics can cause weight gain in certain so what are the adverse effects due to muscarinic blockade apart from the dry mouth blurred vision constipation etc it can also lead to increase in the heart rate tachycardia and also decrease the seizure threshold so some of the individuals uh, can go for seizures can precipitate seizures and after all blockade lead to postural hypotension some of the other important points to remember uh, under antipsychotics are 
by a redazin. So it is cardiotoxic in nature and the other side effects with respect to thioridazin is retinal deposit. Haloperidol most commonly it causes neuroleptic malignant syndrome as well as tardive dyskinesia and close up in which is the atypical antipsychotics most commonly it causes agranulocytosis. So monitoring of the blood is required when you administer close up in it can lead to weight gain it can lead to metabolic complications or uh, it can lead to increased salivations as well as it can precipitate the seizure thank you